big treat for Sada the fans this week, guys. A throwback to the Zabuza versus Kakashi fight. Not as good, but this episode told me one thing. Sada has the potential of becoming the most powerful Kage of all time. Forget just the Hokage, I'm talking about all the Kage. Even though that really doesn't make much of a difference because we know the strongest Kage are Hokage, but you get the point. From clutch reaction times as she was in dire situations to copying ninjutsu to putting her opponent under genjutsu, all the tricks she displayed in this week's episode is just stuff that I feel like they took away from the Sharingan as the story progressed because of the more potent jutsu that came with the Sharingan. But it was nice to see Sada actually being able to use these abilities. And to be honest with you, her opponent was a lot stronger than some of the other opponents, some of the other characters or our characters were fighting in this week's episode. So Sada gets more props than, for instance, Chojuro. The, the, the Mizukage of the village, who should have been like the craziest fighter in this entire, you know, situation because he's the friggin' Mizukage, but no, I actually think Sarada had a better fight than Chojuro. And that's because Chojuro didn't really have a fight if you think about it. He was literally caught in some strings and Hasaku with Zabuza's sword, the executioner's blade, right? All he had to do, he was right in front of him and there was even a joke cracked at him at, like, how long are you gonna take? You're, you're standing right in front of me, you should just swing the sword. All he had to do was take it, listen man, I could do this. Just take the sword, pow, to the side, just cut this dude in half. He failed. Basically, Chojuro used that attack as an opportunity to break the string so that he could free himself, and then he took all three of them out. And honestly, the most, like, like, almost as if it was like a kindergarten fight. I mean, I didn't even know what I was watching. Dude dropped Hizaku by cutting his headband. Dude dropped Hibichigo with the grip of the sword, just getting her, like, and keep in mind, the sword was actually cut in half. Like, he didn't, he didn't even have a real weapon in the fight. That's how you know these guys are exceptionally brilliant. And when it came down to Kyoho, the guy that looks like he should be promoting his mixtape in this fight, um, he just drops down to his knees, which is kind of sad, especially when you're a guy of that size. All you have to do literally is like tackle Chojuro when two of your other mates are going at him. But no, they have no harmony, no synchrony whatsoever, and it's just so sad. Just the entire situation. Like, I know things have gotten lax in the Hidden Mist Village under Chojuro. He's trying to recreate the image of the village so, you know, things aren't as violent as they used to be. People aren't as stressed and working extra hard to become extra powerful shinobi so they could survive. However, look at this entire fight, all right? Tell me honestly if it were like one of the previous Seven Swordsmen of the Mist going up against Chojuro that Chojuro would have gotten bodied. Like, seriously, Chojuro would have been done. Had it been just one real Seven Swordsman of the Mist up against Chojuro in that situation where he's caught up in all those strings, it would have been over. So, honestly, it's really like a major disservice to the title of Seven Swordsman to call these guys the Seven Swordsman because they're nothing like that at all. For instance, you got Kyoho with this big giant weapon, Chojuro stuck. He just threw the whole thing at him. Like, Chojuro, like, that should have hit him. What do you mean? What do you mean I'm laying right in front of him? What? <laughs> Anyways, this was side of this episode for a reason, and I'm guessing that's why the situation was created the way it was. Chojuro was never supposed to shine here. It's supposed to be the kids. That's why I guess they took away his sword from him and he gave it to Kagura just to create this whole situation where these kids could go at it. And I mean, when Sarada's using science and ionization, catching her in Genjutsu and being underwater as the shark's coming towards her as, of course, she's like encased in this lightning armor, but she herself copies that lightning armor to survive. When you have strategies like that being laid out, I'm honestly thinking, and I'm gonna say this right now, I feel like Sarada has more skills than part one Sasuke, a hundred percent. I mean, I know some of you are like, okay, no big deal, but like, I'm talking about tuning exam Sasuke when he was fighting Gata with the Chidori. I mean, it's a very big possibility and that's crazy because, I mean, that took 50, 60 episodes, 70 episodes for Sasuke to get to that point, whereas Sarada were only like 25 episodes in. That's how you know these kids are broken. I don't know if Sasuke could lay out these kinds of strategies where you think Sasuke is dead and then all of a sudden he's up above, you know, throwing a kunai and using science, flooding the entire area. I think it's debatable if Sasuke's execution was on that level, right? Maybe you could say towards the end of part one, he started developing those kinds of skills. But before then, 20 some episodes in no way. And keep in mind, Sarada's learning a lot of these tricks on her own. 
Sasuke's never around. In fact, that was one of the themes of this episode. It's like two Kunoichi going at it that really didn't have any parents in their life, at the very least to train them. Boontang was trying to get attention from her mother, talking about a moon reflection in a bucket of water, and her mom just comes there and just slaps the bucket of water like, that's some psychological child abuse. Like, clearly she ain't have a mom, and Raiga seemingly hit it and left. Where did some of these Seven Swordsmen find time to hit it? All I can really say to that is time wasn't really part of the agenda. You, th you think this was planned? Now, as much as I love Sato's fight specifically, I don't think it was on Land of Waves quality, of course, and you also have to consider the fact that Team Seven was dealing with Zabuza. Zabuza could obliterate all of these guys. Um, Maybe with the exception of Kagura with the Hiramekurai. And the reason I say that is because while Zabuza is extremely skilled, and I think he could probably take Kagura out on a one-on-one, -on -one, at the same time he did wield the Executioner's Blade, which is one of the weaker Seven Swordsman ninja weapons, he himself was just so amazing that he could wield something like that, right? Whereas the Hiramekurai seems to be like a very, very powerful sword in general. like. Executioner's Blade, eh, I feel like you have to be extremely skilled to wield that sword. In fact, that's one of the things Chojiro was pushing in this week's episode. It would be really interesting to see Kagura and Zabuza going at it. I still feel like the skill set is just completely different, right? Zabuza and these other guys, the older generation, are at a completely different level than these thug wannabes. And so for that reason, it's a little harder to compare Sarada and Sasuke, but again, like some of the techniques Buntan was pushing out, honestly, these were some pretty devastating techniques, like using Raiga Kurotsuchi's swords to give herself a lightning armor, you know, drowning her in the water as a shark is coming at her, like these are some pretty dire situations. And I mean, those things were flying around everywhere. Had it not been for Sarada conveniently using the Sharingan throughout this fight, she would have been bodied. She would have been done in. Somebody would have to come in and save her. Maybe Mitsuki, for instance. There was a part of this fight where I actually thought, like, they were going to BS us and, like, Mitsuki is going to come in and save Sarada as she's about to get, like, stabbed in the throat. But then we switched to Mitsuki and he's actually running over to that whole scene. And I wouldn't be surprised if they still explain, like, Sarada surviving with Mitsuki coming in to save Sarada as if he, like, teleported there or something. So yeah, not same situation, but you still got to give Sarada heavy props, and she's going to end up being so skilled as a shinobi as she grows and actually becomes an adult, a kunoichi female kage, like, she's going to be the best one yet, Tsunade going to be put to rest. Um, did Iwabe just die? <laughs> like, did Iwabe just die? I'm not even joking, guys, it's not a joke, it's not a troll, like, did Iwabe just die? And the reason I say that is because, like, I even checked next preview because, like, I was actually curious, like, because sometimes in the preview they spoil some things, like, if a character survives or not, he's not in the preview. Now, I know I could be overthinking this, I mean, he threw himself into that building of fire, and I thought maybe that would have been the situation where Denki and Iwabe both die since they don't appear in both of the Naruto the movie, so there have been past instances where the characters survive even though they could have ended up dying, right? However, I still have the tendency to just overthink things because we don't see them in the movie and it's really odd. So could this be the end of Iwabe as he steps in to save Chojuro? Because this dude Ichiroda is crazy, alright? I know some people are going to call him a coward and he, he kind of is, right? He gets slashed up and he blows himself up with Iwabe and if that's actually how they do Iwabe, that would be really, that would be really sad because it's like they didn't even build it up. They didn't even hype this up. It's just like, kaboom! And then like by the end of the arc, Oh yeah, um, end of the class field trip, we're all going back to the village. Oh yeah, uh, attendance, Boruto, uh, everybody's here, where's, where's Iwabe? Oh, he got blown up a couple weeks ago at that site, it wasn't a big news at all. Like, you know, I feel like if they do Iwabe like this, it would be really messed up, but at the same time, it would actually be a legitimate loss in this whole situation, because somebody really should be dead if you want to be honest. I thought Ichiroda was one of the more hype members of these Seven Swordsmen. He certainly talked like it at the very least, right? And he's no Gene Pachi, but he had the, his sword, he had the Shibuki, it utilizes explosive tags, he could do a lot with it. He could have probably bodied Chojiro, Iwabe saving Chojiro's life, sacrificing himself, getting blown up. End of story, beautiful, I've got to say I'm supportive of it, I just don't see it happening, right? Iwabe being exploded, is, is that the Boruto anime now? Probably not. All in all guys, I've got to say I really enjoyed this episode, I think next week's going to be even better though as Kagura goes in with the Hiramekarai and you can see Boruto struggling and you even got Shisuma there, so... If anything, it's two on one. Oh man, they're gonna be real dirty playing. I don't actually think he's gonna get double teamed since everybody else survived the fights, but let's